I've got to say, I was really surprised by these results. Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at these Maytech ELRS receivers. These are said to be some of the best receivers you can get, but they are a lot bigger and heavier and more expensive than the Happy Model Option, Beta FPV, and other ELRS receivers that we may already be using. One of you commented on one of my previous videos and suggested I try these out, and Banggood was nice enough to send me a pair for testing, so we're going to give them a try in this video. I'm gonna be focusing my testing on using quadcopters, and I'm gonna be flying in more of an urban environment rather than long range, because I'm really curious to see if the high performance of these receivers is worth it in those situations. Let me start by showing you the drone setups I'm using for this test. First, I've got this 3-inch toothpick build. This is a Darwin FPV Baby Ape, and I've installed the Maytech R24D on this drone. This is kind of a ridiculous receiver choice for this drone. You can see that the receiver itself wouldn't even really fit inside the frame, so I have it taped on the bottom of the frame, and then I have the antennas taped along the arms. I think this receiver is too big for a 3-inch drone, but I didn't have a 5-inch available for testing, so I made this work. Next, I installed this Maytech R24S on this 2-inch build. The R24S has a tower or cube antenna, and it's really a competitor to something like the Happy Model EP2. But the board is still pretty large, it's much larger than an EP2. Surprisingly, I was able to fit that receiver into the canopy on this build, so I was pretty happy about that. But it does take up a lot more space than the EP2. I've also got two other drones that I'm using as my control group to compare these new receivers to. First, I've got a tiny trainer build that has a Happy Model EP1 in it, so that's what we're going to be comparing against the R24D. Both of these receivers have wire antennas, they should get better performance. And then finally, I've got this Happy Model Mobula 7 HD0, which has an SPI ELRS receiver with the same tower antenna that we find on the Maytech R24S. Now you might think it's a little bit strange that I'm using an SPI receiver in this comparison. But if you remember back to my previous ELRS receiver comparison, I discovered that the SPI receivers had almost identical performance to the EP2. So I'm using the SPI receiver to stand in for the EP2 in this test. Now that I've got all these receivers installed in the drones, we're gonna go out and do some testing. So I'm out here at one of my favorite flying spots, and I would call this more of an urban environment. We've got a lot of buildings and trees and concrete, and things like that. So what I'm gonna do is fly all these drones along the same path, and we'll try to put them in some difficult situations and then compare the signal between all four of them to see which ones do the best. My radio for this testing is the Radio Master Zorro, and I've got it set on 250 milliwatts with dynamic power turned off. Let's go ahead and start the test. You can see immediately that right in front of me, I have a big water tank. That's definitely going to hurt the signal. And then I'm going to fly over this playground, past these buildings and out into this other parking lot. The first place I'm gonna stop is down in this lower parking lot and I'm gonna get as close to this retaining wall as I can. Now this spot is actually below the ground level of where I'm standing. So the signal's having to go through this wall, through the ground. You can see that there's a building kind of in the way and the trees, that water tank's in the way. So this is a pretty tough spot for signal. Let's take a look at how all of the receivers did. On the left, we're gonna compare the Maytech R24D versus the Happy Model EP1. And then on the right, we'll have the Maytech R24S versus the Happy Model SPI receiver. We can immediately see that in both of these cases, the Maytech receivers are giving us much better performance than the competition. Remember that for the top number, which is RSSI, we actually want a number that's closer to zero because that's a stronger signal. So the Maytech receivers have a much stronger RSSI than the Happy Model receivers. Let's move on to the second test spot. I'm gonna pop up and fly over behind this metal building and I'm gonna try to get the drone as close to this fire hydrant as I can so that we have a similar point of comparison for all four drones. This is also a pretty challenging spot. The signal's having to go through this metal building, through the playground and trees, through the water tank, same thing. This is about 350 feet away from my takeoff position. Again, we'll put the R24D and the EP1 on the left and the R24S and the SPI receiver on the right. Unsurprisingly, these results are pretty similar to what we saw in the first spot. The Maytech receivers have notably better RSSI than the Happy Model receivers, and although the link quality is more similar, I think we would all conclude that the Maytech receivers have the better signal in this situation. But let's move on to the last testing location. I'm gonna fly around a little bit, I'm gonna go around this other building, and then I'm gonna fly down and through this hallway, and I'm gonna stop just past the hallway. The signal's having to take a different path now, but you can see that it's having to travel through this large building, so this is still a pretty tough spot. Let's take a look at the results. 
What I immediately noticed is that all the receivers did pretty well in this spot, and there isn't nearly as much of a difference between the Maytech receivers and the Happy Model receivers. The Maytech receivers still did a bit better, but it's just not as pronounced of a difference. So I think some of this is going to depend on where you fly, and in some situations, you may not see that much of a difference between them. This was an interesting result to include. So that's what I wanted to show you for the testing. I did do more testing than this, and I'm just not gonna show it because I don't wanna bore you, but I think the results I've shown are kind of representative of what I've seen using these receivers. So let's talk about what we've learned. First, I've gotta say, I was really surprised by these results. I wasn't expecting there to be quite as much difference between the Maytech receivers and the Happy Model receivers. I've always been really impressed with ELRS and I've liked those Happy Model receivers a lot, so it was really surprising to see these Maytech receivers show so much of a better signal. And so you might wonder why is that? Why do these receivers do better? And the answer is pretty simple. Remember that the Maytech receivers are a lot bigger than the Happy Model variants, and if you look at them side by side, you can immediately notice that the Maytech receiver has more going on. I mean, there's just more components on this board. I did some research to figure out what's going on on these boards and why we're seeing so much of a better signal on the Maytech receivers. It turns out that these Maytech receivers have an extra amplifier on them. So what's happening is the antenna is receiving the ELRS signal from the transmitter, and then instead of going straight into the ELRS receiver circuit, it's being amplified first before going into that circuit. So that makes these receivers more sensitive and it explains why we see a better RSSI than we do on the Happy Model receivers, which don't have that amplifier. And there's one other interesting thing about these Maytech boards. They also have a telemetry amplifier, which is pretty unusual to see on ELRS receivers. Telemetry is where the receiver can send information over the air back to the transmitter. So that could be things like your RSSI and signal strength, but it could also be battery voltage, GPS position, stuff like that. This is what allows your radio to tell you when your receiver signal is low. It's getting that information from the receiver. So with these Maytech receivers, you're more likely to receive that telemetry information even if you're behind obstacles or at really long range. Another thing I'll mention is that a lot of people have an impression of the Maytech receivers that they're built a little bit better or a little bit higher quality than the Happy Model receivers. You have to decide what you think. I feel like the Happy Model ones are pretty durable and pretty good, but some people like the Maytech because they think that they're stronger or built better. The last thing I'll mention on the design is that the Maytech receivers are well designed for use on planes. You'll notice that the backside of the receiver is completely flat with no components on it, and that's designed so you can put double stick tape on it and easily attach it to the foam structure on a plane. The large size isn't nearly as much of a problem on a plane where you have a little bit more surface area to place things like receivers, and this also explains why the R24S antennas are so long. You have plenty of room to spread them out, and the larger those antennas are, the better chance they have of picking up a signal, especially at long range. So here are my thoughts, and here's what I think you should do. First, if you need maximum range or maximum penetration from ELRS, I think these Maytech receivers are a great option. They definitely outperformed the Happy model and similar ELRS receivers I've used in the past, and if you're flying a plane miles away or something like that, I think this is a great choice and I think it's the obvious choice for ELRS receiver. But a lot of us don't do that and we only fly quadcopters and we don't fly nearly as far away as that. And so I think that that's a little bit of a harder question to answer. If you like to fly micros, I think one problem you might run into with these Maytech receivers is that it's just harder to fit them into a build. I showed you how much trouble I had fitting that R24D onto the three inch toothpick and even though I was able to get it, I sure would be happier with a smaller receiver on that build. I did manage to fit that R24D into the Whoop canopy on my 2 inch build, but it was a lot tighter than an EP2. So those are trade offs, and I think with a micro, you've really got to consider whether the size and weight of those Maytech receivers is worth it for that little bit of extra performance you get. On the other hand, if you do have the space on your build, or maybe if you're using a 5 inch quad or something like that, we were seeing better performance from these receivers. So if you're constantly dealing with telemetry lost warnings, or if you get receiver signal low warnings, things like that, it could definitely be worth upgrading from a previous ELRS receiver to one of these Maytech receivers. Like I said, I wasn't really expecting them to be this much better, or you know, I kind of thought maybe they wouldn't be measurably better, but they are better. So I think if you have the space and if you're willing to pay a little bit of extra money, these Maytech receivers could be a really good choice for your build. But guys, that's gonna do it for this video and I hope you found it useful. 
I'll also mention that if you found these receivers to be a little bit too big for your build, if you're building a Whoop or a Micro or something like that, make sure you check out the previous video I did where I compared ELRS Whoop receivers. I went into a lot of detail on it and I think that'll have some good information if you're looking for something a little bit smaller than these Maytech receivers. I've got links down in the description below to buy the receivers if you're interested. I do always appreciate it when you guys use those links because it does help me out. But thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.